Well, praise God. I'm, uh, I know last week I, I talked about Isaiah and how he ministered to four kings. And then there was the last king was King Hezekiah. And actually Isaiah... When this king came around, Isaiah got, you know, like I was saying, what he was about ready to do for the Lord, all those kings. It was like a, a losing battle, and he was going to preach, but he wasn't going to get much fruit out of it. Well, when he came, when King Hezekiah came, things turned around a little bit. And. He did a he had a revival. He did all kinds of things. Got rid of a lot of gods. He uh, reinforced some things. He put God first again. You know, he even uh, celebrated the Passover. If you read about this king, he did some really great things. But, and I'm gonna be in Psalm 46 this morning. Because after somebody does something great, you know, for God, the enemy comes. You know, the enemy will come and try to cause problems. And that's what happened with Hezekiah. Now, I'm in Psalm 46. Now, in your Bibles, it says, you know, the choir director. I don't know if it says it in your Bibles, but it says who wrote it. A psalm of the sons of Korah to set Almoth a song. Now, a lot of people believe that Hezekiah wrote this psalm. And he also wrote 47 and 48 as well. Now, see, a lot. we think the book of Psalms is just David that writes the Psalms, okay? It's not. Moses wrote some. You know, uh, the sons of Korah did. But in this case, they believe it was Hezekiah that wrote this. King Hezekiah. And at the time he wrote this, um, it was something pretty serious that happened when this battle came against him. After he made all these changes, the king of Assyria came with his army and started threatening the people of Judah. That's what was happening. Okay? And, and I'm going to... And it, this is such an important story in the Old Testament that it's recorded three times in the Bible. It's in 2 Kings chapter 18 and 19, 2 Chronicles 32, and also in the book Isaiah, it talks about it. So that's how important this was that happened, okay? This king of Assyria came, and they were surrounded. It was bad, okay? And Hezekiah gets credit for writing this right here in Psalm 46. Now, if you look in this psalm, there's three places the word Selah is mentioned. It's right at the end of verse 3. It says Selah. Right at the end of verse 7. It says Selah. And at the end of verse 11. It says Selah. So there's three parts to this psalm. And when we read the word Selah. Okay. It's a time to think and contemplate. 
what we just read, okay? And that's a song. That's the way the song was written, okay? And it, so when we read those verses, you know, like verses 1, 2, and 3, Selah, let's think about this, you know? So the way I'm going to present this psalm today, I'm going to do that. All right? As we read the Word of God. There's another thing in here before we read. It also, it, it also points to, it, it, and I'm going to point this out. If you got your Bible, you'll see it. Verse 1. The word our is there. God is our refuge. And if you keep going down, verse 2, therefore we, and then down in verse 7, us, and then it also says our, and then if you go to verse 11, us and our again. So that what's that saying? It's not just me. It's all of us, okay? It's all of us. There's another thing in this psalm I want to point out about God's presence. You know, is with us, is with them, okay? And I'm going to show you where it says that. Verse 1, a very present help in trouble. And then if you look down at verse 5, God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. Verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. Verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. So that is reminding us that God's presence is always with us. He is ever present in our time of need, right? In our time of trouble, it says. So what I'm, I'm going to do now is I'm going to read every section. And when I do sila, I'm going to talk about it, okay? How's that sound? Now, that's an awesome prayer here. It really is. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit just to open up our hearts in understanding as we look at the Word of God this morning so that we can get something out of it. You know what I mean? It, the Bible doesn't really do us any good unless we get something out of it and we apply it in our life, right? Isn't that true? All right. So I'm going to pray. Father, as we read these scriptures this morning, I pray that your Holy Spirit will give us an understanding and give us faith, Father. Give us faith to apply these words to our hearts. And I pray, God, that you move in this time of the sharing of your word. And I pray, God, that that you give us a deep understanding of what you want us to see in these scriptures. Thank you for Psalm 46. And uh, Father, uh, just encourage your saints today. Amen. All right. First three verses. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should, be cha should change, though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake, at its swelling pride, Selah. 
pretty good stuff right there. I don't know, just reading that gives me an assurance. I don't know about you. It does me. You know, God, you know, he's a tower of our strength, ain't he? He's our refuge, the Bible says. You know what that means? Shelter. It's a safe place to be, okay? Now, you got to remember what Hezekiah was going through. And we're going to look at a little bit maybe in Isaiah, the account in Isaiah about this. But it's good to know that God is our safe place, you know, our shelter. Keep us safe. He's also our stronghold. And the Bible tells us that in verses 7 and 11. And that word stronghold, it means high tower and fortress. That makes me feel safe. A fortress, something that can't be penetrated, you know? Well protected, right? Isn't it nice to know that we're at a place like that with the Lord? And it says, therefore, we will not fear. You know? And the thing is, it's good to have a dependable place when everything seems to be falling apart. You know, he shelters us not to coddle us. He shelters us to strengthen us so we can go back to life with its duties and dangers. <laughs> See, we live in this world, and in this world we will have trouble, right? Right? But see, he protects us from evil so that we can keep fighting this fight. You know what I mean? It's not just to coddle us and make us, you know, in this little safe place. Okay? But he does protect us. He does. You know, I'm going to read a couple verses out of that that will back it give us a deeper understanding of that. Psalm 29.11 tells us, The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord bless his people with peace. And then in Psalm 68, verse 35, O God, thou art awesome from thy sanctuary. The God of Israel himself gives strength and power to the people. Strength and power. Blessed be God. And this is a very familiar scripture. That ties right into this. Psalm 40, verse 31. Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain a new strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Hallelujah. See, God. You know, he wants to give us strength, right? And peace. While we feel surrounded. You know, overwhelmed with things. You know what I mean? And if we're not there now, we could be there later. Right? Because we live in that world. There's battles, right? You know, back to Psalm 46, it also says in that part we're looking at, it says, you know, I'm not going to fear though the earth should change. Well, I'm going to look at very present help in trouble, that word trouble. 
I looked it up. You know what it means? Tight places. A corner unable to get out. Feeling hemmed in. Feeling surrounded, right? And God's our present help in those times. He's present with us when we feel that way. That's awesome, right? And, and then I look at where he says, he said, don't be afraid. How many of us know the enemy wants to put fear on us? And then, look at this. Though the earth should change. So now there's going to be visible things that the enemy could throw at us, okay, that we see that can cause us to fear. Right? It says, though the earth should change, though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. I'd be a little nervous if I saw a mountain do that. Though the waters roar, And foam, you know, the foam, right? But don't the enemy want to do that to us sometimes? Try to intimidate us? You know? And when I see that, the ocean is angry, right? You guys ever go to the ocean when it's angry? On a stormy day. Though the mountains quake. All these things are there to get us to fear. And the enemy wants to put us in that place. You know, Hezekiah was in that place. He really was. And actually, in 2 Kings, and I'll read that with this account, Isaiah said something to Hezekiah when he was feeling overwhelmed with the army around and all the threats and everything that was happening. This is what Isaiah said. This is 2 Kings 19.6. Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, in other words, tell Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, Don't be afraid because of the words you have heard which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me? Behold, I will pull it a spirit in him that he shall hear a rumor and return to his whole own land and I will make him fall by the sword in his own land. And that came to pass. Isaiah prophesied this. To Hezekiah, and this came to pass. Though, you know, he, though all those things that were coming to bring fear upon Hezekiah, the Lord wanted him to know. Don't worry about it. I got this. The very one that's trying to get you to react in fear right now, I got this. He's never going to show up here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to send something else, and he's going to go die at home. 
and they die by a sword. Praise the Lord, right? I got this. I'm in control. You know, God wants us to know that sometimes. He wants us to know that he's in control. He is our very present help in trouble. So let's look at verse 4, right down to the next Selah, which is the end of verse 7. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of our stronghold. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah is a river. You know, in that story of Hezekiah, if you were to read those chapters on your own at home, because this is a long story. That's why I'm not taking time to really get into it. I'm giving you the excerpts of it, okay? Well, Hezekiah, and I know this to be true because I just, well, when I went to Israel, I got to see the new uh, archaeological dig they're doing, and they, they actually found this place, okay, underground. So it's really there. I saw it, okay, and they're still working on it. And it's called Hezekiah's Tunnel. And, and what that did, see, at that time, the enemy was surrounded. And Jerusalem at the time, well, where Jerusalem is, there's no river nearby. Most cities have rivers nearby. Jerusalem don't. There was a spring that would feed Jerusalem, an underground spring. And that underground spring, okay, the Bible tells us, if you're taking notes, 2 Kings 2.20 and 2 Chronicles 32.30, it talks about this spring that Hezekiah made. And though they were surrounded, okay, they were getting water on the inside of Jerusalem because of Hezekiah's ingenuity, okay? The Lord gave him this, and they were getting water. And, and that spring would feed the pool of Shalom. That's what it's called, okay? And I saw this spring. I saw it. It's underground. They had a big, big thing. They were still doing the dig. And this spring was really big. And it's funny how the pool is called Shalom, which means peace. And you know, Hezekiah and the people of Israel, even though they were surrounded, the Lord was supplying, you know, water. And you know, when I read in Psalm 46, it tells us there's streams that make us glad, the city of God. And you know, that's talking about the river of life that comes from the throne room of God. Jesus is the river of life. Right? And God wants us to have joy in the midst of feeling surrounded. 
Don't he? Yes, he does. He wants to give us that living water. You know, I'm going to give you a couple verses. Just like I did with the tight places. I gave you some verses about that. How he wants to strengthen us. Well, over here, Psalm 36, 8. It tells us this. They drink their fill of the abundance of thy house, and thou shalt give them drink of the river of the lights. Hallelujah. Psalm 65, 9 tells us, Thou dost visit the earth and cause it to overflow. Thou dost greatly enrich it. The streams of God is full of water. Thou dost prepare her grain, for thou has prepared the earth. And in Psalm 87, it tells us this. Verse 7. Then those who sing well, as, as well as those who play the flute, shall say, All my springs of joy are in you, Lord. See, joy comes from within, not outside. You know, our outside circumstances isn't going to give us that joy that the Lord wants to give us, right? And Jesus, he is that river of life, and he wants to supply that spring within us. We could be surrounded, and we could be refreshed. Just like Hezekiah was. Praise the Lord, right? Go back to Psalm 46. You know, I'm going to read the other part now. Hallelujah. Thank you for the living water, Lord. Huh? Don't you agree? Yeah, you know, before I get in that, and the thing is, I praise the Lord for being baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. I tell you, when I pray in the Spirit, things change for me sometimes. My circumstances might be the same, but when I pray in the Spirit, God builds me up on the inside. You know what I mean? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? He builds me up on the inside. And, and you know, my circuit, I can still feel hemmed in, but I'll tell you what. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And the Lord is just going to keep me going on the inside, and it's going to be all right for me. You know what I mean? I could be in the worst of circumstances and I could be full of joy in the Lord. Those living, that living water, right? Now I'm going to go over here now. Verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord. Who has wrought desolations on the earth. He makes wars to cease. The end of the earth. To the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns chariots with fire. And you know what? That happened with Hezekiah. And I'm going to read that account to you. It's in, like I said, I told you I was going to go in Isaiah, that account in Isaiah.
Because verse 21, no, well, I can start there for a minute, I guess, on that account. This is Isaiah 37. But starting 21 all the way down to 29, the Lord talks to Hezekiah after he asked God for help, okay? He actually laid a letter down, the letter of threat at, the, at his prayer time. He put the letter down. He said, God, I really need you to show up, you know? I need you to show up in my life. He put this letter down, he fasted, he prayed, and the Lord spoke, and the Lord let him know, because you did this. See, verse 21, Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent word to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, because you have prayed to me about, okay, that guy's name, I practiced this. And I'm going to try to say it, okay? Sankarib. That's kind of how it's broken down. Sankarib. Okay? I hope I said that right. King of Assyria. See, you pray to me about this. And this is what I want to encourage you with. And if you read what the Lord said, it was like, wow, this is really cool, right? God heard my prayer, and boy, my enemy's in trouble. Look at verse 29 of the same chapter of Isaiah. Because of your, rage, because of your raging against me, he's talking about this king of Assyria, and because of your arrogance has come up to my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle on your lips and I will turn you back by the way which you came. That was from the Lord. The Lord of hosts. Did you notice that that word host is mentioned again just like with Isaiah? The Lord of hosts of angel armies. The Lord of hosts said that. But when I was reading in Psalm 46, I was talking about, oh, let's look at the works of the Lord, how he destroyed, and he caused the wars to end, and he broke the weapons and the bows, right? Even caused chariots to be on fire. That's what it said in Psalm 46. Well, look at this. See, when you're hemmed in, and when you feel surrounded and you feel trapped, okay? But God, look at this. The angel of the Lord, okay? Remember, he's the God of angel armies. The angel of the Lord, this is Isaiah 37, 36. The angel of the Lord went out and struck 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians and when the men arose early in the morning behold all of these were dead one angel killed 185,000 men Not hemmed in anymore. <laughs> Not hemmed in anymore. Now keep going. So, Sennacherib, I hope I said that right, king of Assyria departed and returned home and lived in Nineveh. You remember what Isaiah told them? Don't be afraid. Look at this. It came about, he was worshiping in the house of Nishkrosh, his God. And what, well, isn't it amazing all these names you can't pronounce? 
that Adramalek and Sherezer, his sons, killed him with the sword. And they escaped into the land of Ariat. And Esherazon, his son, became king in his place. Look at that. Just like Isaiah prophesied to Hezekiah when he said, don't be afraid. This is what's going to happen to him. Which leads me to verse 10 of Psalm 46. Isn't that amazing, no? Think about it. One angel killed 185,000 war-ready men. One angel. Now, God is the God of angel armies. Right? He is our refuge. He is our strength, right? He is our ever help in time of trouble, isn't he? Though we feel hemmed in, in this world of limits, we serve an almighty, powerful God. That's why this verse is here right now. Now, the King James says it a little bit different, but I'm in a new American standard right now. Verse 10. Cease striving and know that I'm God. Now, King James says, be still. And know that I'm God. Which ties into the title I titled this message today. I'm going to give you the title at the end of my message. Take your hands off. Relax. I'm God. How many times do we worry? And what does God want us to know? Hands off. Relax. Stay in that shelter. I am your fortress. I'm the source of that living water that you need to have joy. And just wait on me. And you're going to see the enemy destroy. Just wait on me. Wait on me. I don't know about you, but I get excited when I read that. But I'd like to say that I I would love to think that I have enough faith to always feel that God, you got this, okay? But there are times, if I was honest with you, It looks good in the Bible, but it's hard to live. It's hard for us to understand that sometimes when we go through a trial. You know what I mean? But he wants us to know, okay? We can't just go, you know, we we can't react, you know? When the earth is changing, when the mountains are slipping, you know? When the waters are roaring. When the mountains are quaking. We can't react to that. We got to be still and know. 
that he's God. Hallelujah. You imagine if we did that? And we didn't strive and we didn't try to fix something sometimes. You know what I mean? I think we'd have a lot less headaches and a lot less heartache. You know? I know when I worry. When I worry. A lot of times what I worry about it never even happens. And I waste all this time worrying. And I think this is really good for us to know, you know, this God, this God of the armies, this God of these angel armies, that one angel can do, you know, what he did, you know. Well, he's on our side. He loves us. He's with us. And he, all he wants for us, he's telling us, don't react. Get your joy from me. And be still. Be still. Just know I'm God. God is God. You know, I think about all what's going on, you know, in the world right now. And I talked about some of it last week. And, you know, all these people, they think they know better than God, right? And we get all frustrated about that, don't we? You know what I mean? Us finite little puny people, <laughs> and that's what we are. Especially, like, I look at my telescope, I see the universe, and I see all these things out there and stuff. And Earth is just a little speck in the middle of all of that. And we live on this little speck called Earth. <laughs> and God knows all of us by name. He cares about us. He's telling us, I got this. And these people that feel they know better than God. Well, you know what? Be still. Know that I'm God. All these things that we concerned about. God's got this. <laughs> these people that think they can live without him. God's got this. These people that think they know better than God. God's got this. So we don't need to let the devil rob us of our joy. We can live life at peace and strong. Right? Even if we get news, all right? Go to the doctor's office, and the doctor says, I hate to tell you, but you've got stage four cancer. That's a trial. But God, be still and know that I'm God. So I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to pray a blessing on all, all of you today. That we, we not only read Psalm 46, but we apply it in our life. I don't know about you, but that psalm gives me a lot of assurance. How about you? You know? When I read that psalm, I feel like God is bigger than a boogeyman. 
He is. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for the word of God. I thank you for Psalm 46. God, I thank you, Lord, that you cared enough about Hezekiah and the people of Israel that you showed up and met them and delivered them from the enemy, oh God. And Father, help us to get comfort knowing that you are our refuge. You are our stronghold. You provide living water for us to drink so that we can have joy. And Father, thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we need to just be still. We need to take our hands off of whatever it is that we try to fix. And we just got to wait on you, Lord. Because I know you're going to show up. I pray that you bless each and every person here. Help us to live in a world of faith. Help us to trust you with every trial that we face in our life every challenge, every trial. And it's always changing. This world is changing. But the promise is you're going to give us strength. You're going to give us strength, Lord. And peace. And we'll be drinking from the river of Shalom. The pool of Shalom. In the middle of our trial. Thank you for that. And Lord, bless each and every person here. I pray that you bless them, help them, strengthen them, preserve them. And Lord, we know you're coming back. And we want to all have the victory. And Lord, help us, Lord, to continue to remind ourselves to be still. And know that you are God. Thank you, Jesus, for today. And bless our time together for the rest of the day. And I ask you all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, God bless you.